In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to write a claim evidence reasoning response. When first teaching students the skill of writing CER responses, it can be less intimidating if you remove the skill from the difficult science content. Today, we are going to use a fun scenario to practice the skill. In this particular scenario, there are no right or wrong answers as long as students are able to use evidence to support their claim. This type of activity allows for varied responses within the class. Examine the image that's on the next slide and carefully read the scenario as I read it aloud. We will use the image and the text to answer the question in CER format. On March 12, 2012, Arthur V. was found dead at the bottom of the staircase in his home. He was face up with his feet on the second and third steps. In addition, he was holding a glass. There were no broken objects on the stairs. He was also wearing a robe that was neat, not messy. The floor was dry. His wife, Queenie, said Arthur slipped and fell down the stairs when he was coming down for another drink. She asked her friends what she should do. She also stated that she arrived home 10 minutes before her friends. Our question that we are going to be answering today is, did Queenie kill her husband, Arthur? We begin by writing our claim. In our claim, we tell what we believe to be true about the question being asked. Your claim comes from the question, and the easiest way to write a claim is to restate the question, completing the statement with your answer. Because your claim is what you believe to be true, your claim may be different from others that are looking at the same scenario or answering the same question. In this case, I believe that Queenie did kill her husband, so for my claim, I'm going to write, Queenie killed her husband, Arthur. You'll notice that I have highlighted this statement in blue. We highlight our claim in blue because it is our true blue statement. Then we write our evidence. Give evidence from the text, video, or experiment to tell how you arrived at your answer. Evidence should be facts only. We do not include our feelings or our opinions in our evidence. And they should be indisputable to anyone else who is reading the same text, watching the same video, or using the same data. Think of it like a court of law as a prosecuting attorney presents evidence in a trial. They are sharing only the facts that cannot be disputed. Your evidence comes from the text or lab results. And you can include evidence like data, observational data, such as what we see in our picture, quotes from the text, etc. For my claim that, e that Queenie killed her husband, Arthur, my evidence that supports this is that Arthur is face up at the bottom of the stairs, the glass he is holding is not broken, and there are no broken objects on the stairs. While you may disagree with me about Queenie's guilt or innocence, you cannot dispute these facts. We highlight our evidence in green because this is the ground on which we stand when we're making our claim. You can see that I've circled in the picture and highlighted in the text where my evidence comes from. It is directly stated or directly shown in the picture, so it cannot be disputed even if someone disagrees with my claim. Next, we write your reasoning. Tell why each piece of evidence you gave supports the claim that you made and comment on why your evidence backs up your claim. Your reasoning comes from your head. Your commentary should make connections from your evidence to your claim based on your own thoughts, feelings, emotions, ideas, or opinions. My reasoning is that if Arthur had tripped and fallen as he was walking down the stairs, he most likely would have landed face down. Also, he probably would have tried to catch himself which would have caused him to drop the glass he was holding. If he had tried to catch himself, he most likely would have knocked over the candelabras and mirror on the staircase. Many students get their evidence and their reasoning mixed up. You can see here that my reasoning is completely my own personal thoughts. These could easily be disputed and they are not proven by facts from the picture or from the, from the text that was provided. Students need to understand that their evidence has to be indisputable, whereas their reasoning is their own personal feelings or thoughts on that evidence. We highlight our reasoning in yellow because it helps to shine a light on our evidence. 
This is why a completed CER paragraph might look like. I've left the highlighting in. The color coding using the blue, green, and yellow when practicing CER responses in the classroom has multiple benefits. First, it aligns with how students are being taught to write assertion evidence claim or AEC responses in language arts. The consistency of the color coding between the subjects or the parts of the responses helps students to see the parallel components. Secondly, using the colors helps students to make sure that they are including all three parts in their answer and that each part is fulfilling its intended function. The color coding also makes work easier for peers and or teachers to assess because it clearly shows what the writer intends to be each part of the response. I hope that you have found this tutorial helpful in writing CER responses.